More on the story that broke at the top of the hour. General Electric and Comcast teaming up to create an entertainment powerhouse valued at $37 billion. What does this all mean for Comcast shareholders? Chris King is an analyst who follows the company, and he's joining us now on the phone with his reaction. Chris, thanks for your time this morning. First off, your reaction. Did this play out as you expected it to? Sure, good morning. Well, certainly to the extent this was one of the worst kept secrets on uh, Wall Street for the past uh, couple of months. Uh, yeah, I think it was it was generally as expected. You know, a, a, a couple of quick tidbits for Comcast shareholders, certainly, that will likely be construed as good news. The company is increasing its dividend by 40 percent in conjunction with this morning's announcement. Uh, also uh, announced that it, it uh, is uh, planning on completing its uh, $3.6 billion uh, share buyback uh, plan within the next 36 months or so. So that certainly incrementally, it's uh, good to see them continue to commit to the share buyback program as well as the increase in the, uh, in the uh, dividend. In other words, doing these other little things to appease shareholders who might be concerned about going in this direction. Yeah, certainly the stock has been under a little bit of pressure since uh, late September when uh, word of the transaction first broke. So I think there is a, a, a certain amount of appeasement uh, going on to shareholders. We, we personally like the deal from a strategic uh, standpoint in particular. Uh, we we uh, are a little bit more bearish on the cable industry longer term. Uh, I don't know if I'd use the, the, the term death spiral necessarily, but I think uh, certainly all cable companies do run the risk of becoming uh, commoditized, dumb pipe players over time. Uh, certainly they really don't have the balance sheets to compete with the bells that are deploying fiber and much faster broadband speeds, uh, and uh, they don't have uh, a real tangible wireless asset uh, either. So I think all of those things really put them at a significant disadvantage uh, longer term, and certainly I think this is a way for Comcast uh, to diversify its uh, pure kind of cable MSO uh, asset base uh, and uh, get one of the uh, one of the truly great content assets out there, and they, they they certainly don't come available very often. So I think this was a unique opportunity for Comcast. Chris, can you compare and contrast what's happening here with Comcast, as you just alluded to, getting content with what Time Warner did in getting rid of content? Yeah, it's uh, certainly an interesting dichotomy there. You know, I think that. Uh, uh, you know, certainly Time Warner had its own issues and, 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 and reasons for doing that, so I wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily draw a, a direct correlation uh, between the two. Uh, but, you know, certainly there, there are a, a fair amount of investors on the street that like the, uh, you know, free cash flow uh, generation uh, coming out of the uh, cable MSO business. I think that Time Warner Cable, certainly when it was spun off from Time Warner, was uh, certainly trying to... Uh, uh, capture right. a, a, a good deal of that. You know, I do think that Comcast is in a unique situation. The Roberts family does control the company. I think they can afford to uh, run the company a little bit more long term from a strategic uh, standpoint than uh, certainly hey, perhaps a uh, Time Warner Cable. Chris, before we let you go, very quickly, Jeff Zucker leading this new entity. Your thoughts on that? Uh, you know, hard to say. I don't really cover a, a, a lot of the uh, content guys. So, uh, you know, certainly NBC has been in the doldrums of late from a, a rating standpoint. I think that they're going to need to get that turned around sooner rather than later. All right. Chris King, thank you for your time. An analyst who covers Comcast reacting to this uh, very massive transaction taking place.